Hey guys, welcome to a video where I'm showing you the updates for the Megasol Charger regular this time. I've gone ahead and implemented the state machine logic that I applied to the Megasol Charger Pro to the Megasol Charger regular because I was running into some issues with the old firmware and I didn't want it to chase that around and instead I have changed it to uh, the version with the logic that's already tested the voltage reading and current reading is also improved also the ESR so there was no point in maintaining the old version of the firmware for the regular Megacell charger for those that still use the Megacell monitor software I don't think this is going to work I advise you to use the old firmware in combination with Megacell monitor because this new version is going to work only with Megacell CNC for now. So let me show you what I have done. All right, so you are going to see that the menu has changed. It looks very similar to what you have with uh, the Megacell Charger Pro. The only difference is that this menu is going to be controllable with one button instead of two. Short pressing the function button will get you to cell details. And then you sh keep short pressing and you can view all the cells. Long pressing will exit that. So long press then release and you'll see that it exits. Uh, to enter the menu, long press for more than one second then release and then you get into the menu. Then short presses will uh, scroll through the menu. Let's go into settings to show you what you have available. You have chemistry, you have connectivity, hardware, display. Under display, you can uh, actually allow it to cycle information. So if you don't want to automatically go through the cells, you can turn it off then save and that way you're going to control it manually so to apply a settings you long press uh, on save then to scroll short presses chemistry hardware in hardware you can set uh, the fan to turn on if you want to test the fans or if you want to keep it on all the time you can do that otherwise it will turn on and off automatically you have the cell grouping commands that's for the chargers that uses the XS10 connectors or if you want to uh, group the cells and you apply some custom connectors solder some wires on the cells or whatnot uh, this has been discussed on the Megacell Charger Pro then you save and that's uh, what you can do in into the hardware to set the the Wi-Fi you must go to connectivity here long pressing will show you the connection status long pressing again will exit that you can start the configuration portal to allow you to set the Wi-Fi access point like I said, it's very similar to what we have in, um, in Megasol Charger Pro. It's basically the same menu, but with a few things that are um, changed to match the, the hardware that uh, we're using now, the old version. So here in the chemistry, you can choose this setting, and this will discharge with uh, one amp and the above setting will discharge with half an amp and you can also go through the custom setting as well here you can edit any setting by long pressing once then you can keep pressing to select the digit that you want to edit and the issue with one button is that there's no return here so you'll have to press press and press again to exit so you start over if you want to to do that so if you want to change the store voltage 
go up. Press again. Or if you want to set it to 2.9, for example. Here you can set the maximum capacity timeout, discharge current, max temperature, low voltage, max time, it's in minutes, max charging time, cycle count, and then you can hit apply. And once the custom chemistry has been applied, You can see it in the left corner that it says custom. That's the settings that are applied to, to this. Now if I insert some cells, you will see them appearing on the screen as well. And if you want to start an operation, you go to the menu, you go to operations, and you can run the macro measure capacity. This will fully charge the cells, measure the ESR, then um, discharge the cells to measure the capacity, and then store charge them. Alright, so let's go into the Mega CNC to show you how you can add the device as well. Okay, so in the Mega CNC, I have it running on a Raspberry Pi. I already added the device, but I will delete it to show you how to add it. If you would like to use the same setup I'm using with the Raspberry Pi, you can order one that's pre-configured from our website. So if you get this kit, we're going to ship it with the SD card uh, that has the operation uh, software and uh, it's, it's set up for you to start using it right away. You create a project, you add a new project, go to devices and you can add a new device from here. You add the IP range that you have in your network and click the scan. You can scan it a few times and in case you don't find the device uh, you can also add the IP manually here. And you can find the IP from the connection status after you configure it to connect to the network. So select the device choose the project where you want to add it and then click add device after you add the device wait five seconds because it needs to pull the data from the device otherwise it will show you an error if you click right away i still have to solve this issue but uh, if it's past more than five seconds then uh, all the slots have been populated and now it's uh, getting live data from the device so here you can see the state, you see the capacity, the charge capacity, the number of cycles and I have the QZ uninstalled on this device but for now we don't have to use it. I still have to sort that pop-up out. Right, so here you can sort the, the fields if you want to and you can also get a graph showing uh, with the data. So now the firmware running on the Megasol Charger is not much different from the Megasol Charger Pro. It's only the hardware differences and uh, 
the fact that you cannot set uh, a target voltage on each slot like you do on the Megacell Charger Pro. Right, so if you want to set the settings, go to device and you can change its name if you want to. Uh, set the store voltage here, you can see that uh, we're running 2.9, the voltage that it was set in the custom chemistry. Here you can set the discharge current, so you can stop the ma macro and I can start the discharge. You can observe that the tester started discharging. So a nice thing is that you can change these settings while the operation is um, is on. So you can see different voltage drops on uh, different loads if you want to play with it or uh, just for the sake of changing the information. That was something that was not working on the old firmware and uh, I tried to look around in that code but it was so 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 complicated and in not a good way. I could not follow the, the proper path to make the changes uh, work properly. So that introduces some errors in the old firmware and I could not deal with that. Uh, that was the main reason I started the new firmware for the Megacell Charger Pro and uh, there was no reason for me to mess with that any any longer. So I just plugged in the controls for the old Megacell Charger into, into the new firmware and uh, it appears to be working fine now. Everything works as expected. 3.7 So again guys if you want to start using this new software and you don't want to mess with uh, installing virtual machines go to deepcyclepower.com find this Raspberry Pi 4 start kit order it and I will pre-configure it uh, for you and send you this kit that's plug and play basically you just connect the Ethernet port to your Raspberry Pi uh, it will get an IP from your network you will just have to look up uh, for the IP address assigned by your router to the Raspberry Pi and then you access that in browser like I do here and uh, start using your um, your Megacell chargers. To get the new firmware you go to the Mega CNC and here you have uh, the Megacell firmwares and you see here that uh, this is for the regular Megacell charger basically all the old versions of Megacell chargers. This doesn't include yet the Megacell chargers with the 3D printed shrouds and uh, I could make a, a version for those as well but I want to know if there are still people using that and uh, if they want to use it with the Mega CNC and I will spend the time to fix that as well and this is the firmware for Megacell Charger Pro uh, don't try writing this one on uh, the regular device it won't work properly you won't damage it, but uh, it, 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 it will not find the devices required to run it. So that's it guys, go on the GitHub and uh, get the firmware updated using PyFlasher, but make sure you don't erase Flash, or you can do that in a browser by typing the IP address of your device, like so. If it asks you for username and password, type in admin admin then choose the file update the firmware and then you are good to go you have the new Megacell charger installed further updates done for the new firmware you must first enable the OTA and hardware config and then you have the web version of firmware update available on the new firmware as well
let me know what's your feedback on the new firmware i already tested for um, the workflow it ran it properly no longer having errors showing high capacity like 11,000 milliamps for a 3000 uh, milliamp cell i see this as an improvement but let me know what your thoughts are and uh, what kind of uh, results you're getting with the new firmware all the best